Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to another Basketball Champions League uh, Final Eight uh, Countdown Show. My name is uh, Dionis Arvadinos, uh, I'm your host as always and uh, I'm joined by Alex Madrid uh, from Eurohoop Spain. Alex, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about the better start at Tenerife today. Uh, so, so you're going to be on, you're going to give uh, your insights about the team. How are you first of all? Hi Dionis, uh, well I'm, I'm great. I, ha I really had fun the other day talking about San Paolo, San Paolo Burgos and now we have one of the top teams in the competition. So I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, so obviously we're going to talk about, uh, as you mentioned, one of the favorites uh, in the competition in uh, Ibero Start and Erife. We're going to get to the crazy result of the weekend, uh, uh, that win that they, that they made uh, down 24, uh, which was uh, incredible against uh, Murcia. And uh, obviously, Gerard de Solé will uh, join us uh, to talk about uh, the team in more depth and uh, details. And uh, Georgos Bogris from Tenerife will also join our live show. And he's going to talk about uh, that whole transition, that whole process of uh, playing in the Spanish League at the start of the season and uh, competing for a title in the Basketball Champions League uh, Final late uh, Tournament. Uh, Alex, what are your first uh, thoughts about the team? How do you how do you view them and uh, how have you watched them play this uh, at first preseason and then obviously the first few games in the Spanish league? Well, first of all, I have to say that the feeling that uh, we can see in Tenerife is uh, they feel like they can win two times this season the the basketball Champions League because they feel like they are contenders for this uh, final league tournament, but they are also contenders for the for the 2020-21 uh, season. So. Uh, we have uh, here a team with a lot of experience, uh, focus on two guys who are Giorgi Sermadini and Marcelino Huertas. We all know them very well. And after the few, uh, a few uh, first matches, well, I mainly saw them in the Spanish Super Cup and the Basketball Champions League because they have to play uh, one game before uh, made the, the final eight. I saw them uh, like a consistent team. Focus on five guys. Chus Vidorreta gave, gave a lot of minutes to five guys who he trusts a lot. And as I, I told you, they have two stars. And all the game goes around uh, both of them. Let's see if they can involve, uh, get involved more players during the tournament. But we have to focus on those two guys. Yeah. Uh, obviously, these, these two guys are probably if not the, one of the most uh, interesting duos to watch in the uh, tournament. Uh, Marcelino Huertas obviously led the league in assists uh, with uh, 8.2, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, but yeah, talk, talk to me a little bit about the, the preseason of the team, the, the first few games that they've played in the Spanish league. And uh, obviously we're going to get to that in, uh, in a minute with uh, Gerard. Uh, about that uh, crescendo that they had, they made in uh, in Murcia the other night. But talk to me about that. Uh, these few three games that they've played, won obviously all of them. Well, first of all, we have to say that their first official game this year goes against Real Madrid. It's not an easy challenge to begin the season, uh, but I think like they started to get rhythm against them. Uh, it was a tough night for them, but then they faced Ostende in the in the round of 16 that that game was uh defensively really good by this uh, canary island team and after that it came the acb where they felt a lot of more uh, really more comfortable uh, they won at home against uh, zaragoza that will be their rival in these quarterfinals in the um, in an overtime but it was a really good game for for the Nerife. then they beat murci uh, bilbao basket if i'm not mistaken and then the, the game against Ucam Murcia that, um, well, they were really close to, to lose by a large margin, but they made that incredible comeback. So that's uh, something that the teams that will be competing in the Champions League will have to, uh, to see because uh, this team won't uh, be out of the game for a lot of minutes. They will come yeah. back, they, they, won't, they won't surrender. I, I think, Alex, that uh, that game against uh, Murcia, the fact that they were down 24 points, uh, the fact that they were down 11 points with 80 seconds remaining, yeah. they still managed to win the game at the buzzer. Uh, I think that momentum can carry uh, towards the Basketball Champions League uh, 
competition and the game against uh, Saragossa. You obviously mentioned that uh, briefly, but what, what do you expect from that quarterfinal? Because it's basically a, a second, if so, leg, let's say, because they, they, they obviously played in uh, the 21st of September and uh, Tenerife won in overtime that game. So I think the two teams are pretty close, uh, even though uh, Tenerife are the favorites and uh, Saragossa are the underdogs. Uh, what do you see? What do you think about that? Well, last season it seemed that Zaragoza was a little bit more stronger than Tenerife, but that changed at the beginning of this season because uh, Zaragoza had to change many players, they changed the coach, so that's different and that's important for the game. Um, if we also check uh, uh, that game that was, that was won in, in overtime, uh, we felt like, as I, I told you, there are five players that are really important for Chus Vidarreta. And uh, they are the most experienced ones. And that's decisive for a game that will be played. Uh, well, it's Ardaya, uh, you can uh, go to the semifinals or go home. There's no other thing to do. And, uh, well, let's see. I, I have to tell you that there's no Spanish team that wants to face another Spanish team in, a, in an elimination yeah. game. I guess it happens the same with other teams, but you know that the Spanish league is one of the most strongest one in here in Europe. So I'm sure that Tenerife will not be confident despite the win they got in, in the Spanish league. Mm -hmm. But uh, but as, as I mentioned earlier, I think that these, these three wins in the Spanish league and especially the last, uh, the last yeah, game one. Was, uh, was spectacular and I think that momentum can, uh, can carry on. Uh, with uh, with uh, Yorgos Bogris uh, later on, he's going to give us uh, his uh, thoughts about that. But now let's uh, bring in uh, Gerard and uh, on Spain and have him give uh, his insights about uh, the team in general. Uh, Gerard, uh, hello and uh, nice to see you again. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, see you again uh, to talk. To, about this uh, final eight, uh, and today is, is a special day because we are talking uh, about one of the champions of, of this tournament. Yeah, yeah. as you mentioned, the Tenerife is actually one of the champions that have won it in uh, recent years. We were pretty much getting into it with uh, Alex talking about uh, that uh, last uh, crazy weekend uh, that they had, uh, that win against uh, Murcia, and I was, I was asking Alex, I want your opinion on that. Uh, do you think that this game can uh, can help Tenerife in a more uh, psychological type of way uh, going to that game against the Saragossa and an elimination game in the Basketball Champions League uh, tournament? Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, probably they played uh, like the their worst 30 minutes in the season because uh, the first 30 minutes of the team are, is, is absolutely terrible. Uh, no uh, no logical on offense, no defense at all. I think mm -hmm. they, they had a lot of problems uh, to create uh, some good offense. Uh, and every, everybody says that this team maybe is too focused on uh, Marcelino Huertas and Shermadini. Uh, yeah. And they, they need to get uh, more weapons, uh, not only uh, inconsistent weapons like Salin. They, they need some players that uh, uh, made this step up uh, to, to be a, a solid player for the team, especially if they want to, to win the final eight. Yeah. Do, do, they have, uh, do they have these players that they brought in this offseason? What, what are your thoughts on the, on the signings that they made uh, this offseason? Until now, I'm very disappointed with Tyler Cavano, yeah. if, uh, if I'm sure, sincere, because uh, I, I thought that he, he, his role in, on this his team, uh, it, it, it's necessary to be one of uh, these and other weapons, especially on, on offense. And I think he's not uh, comfortable with the team. Uh, he's not getting all the shots that probably he wants, but the team is not involving him also in offense. Uh, and that's uh, for me, it's the main problem of, of his uh, not uh, that that is he's not playing well. Um, I think Vidoreta has a lot of work to to really establish Cabano on Tenerife's offense, 
And defensively, it's uh, right now a team that uh, uh, has a lot of problems to defend uh, quick and explosive guards. And probably Zaragoza is one of the best teams on that uh, because they have Venice, they have Suleiman, they have uh, DJ Sealy. So I, I think uh, they will suffer a lot to, to win uh, Zaragoza because of that. Uh, you talk about uh, Cavano. I wanted to ask you if you feel like uh, he can be a chemistry problem for the team during the final eight. I don't think so because uh, it's too early on on this season to to really have some problems uh, on the locker room or on chemistry. Uh, team was already fixed because it's like the same team as uh, last year, probably last two years. Uh, because uh, what what Shermadini is uh, for this team is is really a key player, but but also now Marcelino. And for me, the, the main doubts that they have uh, with this team is if they will be able to get more weapons, especially on offense, uh, to help Huertas and Shermadini. If they are not able to, to get more players, uh, probably they are not a final eight contender. Mm -hmm. could, could, uh, could rebounding be, be, an, be also an issue for them? Because... Uh, Obviously, Zaragoza was one of the best uh, rebounding teams in the competition uh, last uh, last year, this season, obviously, how you, however you want to say. But uh, Tenerife averaged uh, 34 rebounds per game, which was 25th in the competition. Uh, I think that could be a huge issue, uh, huge issue for them. Uh, would you agree with that? I have to agree with that because uh, they they didn't sign any player that that really can help on that. Uh, Kamano is is not a great rebounder. He he can help, but he's not a great rebounder. And and Shermadini, especially you know, on defense, he suffers a lot with mobile uh, centers. And probably he will he will have uh, to play against Jason Thompson, and and, and, and Thompson could could really as, uh, have a, a very uh, high impact on, on the game. But uh, I, I think what, what Tenerife needs is uh, more, it's not only on offense, more more help uh, of all players. Uh, what, uh, what I saw in these first games, and I saw last year too, is that they need, for example, Danny Diaz to stay healthy and to play really good, uh, to be a reliable uh, three-point shooter, but he needs the, to help all, also the team on rebound. And when Danny Diaz is not playing good, they don't have uh, another uh, secondary weapons uh, on offense. They don't have another help on, on defense. This team can lose to to which uh, to everybody because it's not... Uh, solid enough uh, just to win with, with Huertas and, and Shermadini. Fortunately for them, they have signed Fittipaldo, who is playing really good right now. But uh, I don't know how will be the Reta handle all the rotation because uh, Marcelino needs a lot of, of minutes. And Fittipaldo, I think he is not able to, to play as a shooting guard. In a short tournament like, like, the, like this, Gerard, do you feel like uh, the history of the team, being able to win the first edition of the Basketball Champions League, also winning two international intercontin inter intercontinental cups, it's going to be an important fact during the games? It could be, but 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 I think uh, the main factor for this Tenerife team is that they uh, didn't have a very good start of the season. And, it, and I think the team is not physically ready uh, as I saw uh, Zaragoza uh, for this first matchup, uh, because um, Marcelino is not is not in great shape right now. Shermadini is not in great shape right now, uh, and they are trying to fix all the common problems uh, already. And, and I think uh, Zaragoza is is playing better. Uh, they have a lot of problems also on on his inside, but uh, the team is more focused probably uh, physically uh, on this final eight uh, and Tenerife. Uh, I don't want to say that they are not that hungry uh, to win the title, but probably it's not their main goal. So for Zaragoza, it's a special goal, but Tenerife has won that uh, once. Probably they will be contenders for the 2020-21 season, 
But for this final eight, I don't think Tenerife is a, a real contender because he, he didn't they didn't show that level during this far, the first part of the season. Gerard, I, I, I'm not I'm not really here at least uh, at least based, based based on the on the results of the team because uh, especially that uh, that game against Murcia I think was uh, what exactly the fans of Tenerife wanted before the Basketball Champions League final eight uh, tournament like a win the out of nowhere they didn't even expect it down 24 down 11 with uh, 80 seconds remaining or so and they still managed to win it so I think that they this game is what exactly um, Tenerife fans actually want uh, from the team in uh, in that uh, upcoming game in Athens against uh, Zaragoza. But uh, yeah, obviously you have your opinion. You know obviously best because uh, you've covered the team uh, for so many years. But another question I have for you because since you since but, but you gave I, I have I have to agree with you because it's a, a great moment for for the team. But uh, I I don't want to. To reduce the credit of of this win for Tenerife, yeah. but Murcia allowed 21 points in 100 seconds. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's absolutely <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. No, yeah. there is no sense. So I, I think it's it's a great uh, win for for Tenerife, but uh, maybe it's not uh, Tenerife's. Uh, Great win! It's it's more like Murcia's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see your point. Uh, okay, we're not gonna talk about that anymore because I think we've pretty much. But my my final question for you, and I don't know if Alex uh, wants to ask you anything else, is uh, pretty, much, pretty much you've covered all the weaknesses of the team. Uh, I want to know the strengths of uh, of Tenerife besides uh, Sermandini and uh, Huertas. Uh, besides that uh, incredible duo, do you see any other uh, strengths that they have and uh, could bring to the table come uh, Athens time. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I think the, the addition of Idipaldo uh, gave uh, the team another reliable, reliable scorer on the backcourt, and that's really important. I think Vidoreta uh, have made a, a great job this these past days. Uh, uh, trying to fix everything, but but he was uh, an amazing coach last last years. Uh, what uh, they do, especially on uh, out of bounds plays, uh, is one of the best in in Europe, and probably in uh, in a short tournament that like this, uh, that tactical point is is very important too because probably is one of the the team that have scored more points. The, after that uh, out of band uh, play, uh, I think it, it could be one point, and the second one is the experience. Obviously, Huertas uh, uh, and Shermadini knows how to how to play this, but they have also Sasu Salin, who is uh, uh, a really good player for this type of, of tournaments. Uh, and I think uh, in this tournament, George Borgris have have to be a, a very important player. Uh, because he he's able to do everything in, in the court because uh, he's a great rebounder. He can score. He can pass. But uh, he will give also this team that maturity in the crucial moment that I think uh, also Bidoreta can can think to play uh, both Shermadini and Bogris at the same time. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk with uh, Bogris in uh, a while. But Alex, go ahead. Ask uh, Zara. Yeah. I will ask him. I will ask him today and not tomorrow. Do you consider then Casademont Zaragoza favorite for this matchup? Right now, probably. Right now, probably because I think they they are uh, in a great uh, moment. They they had uh, an ups and downs, especially in the last game against Gran Canaria, because he, they started the game really terrible. But they have a lot of weapons on the backcourt. Uh, it's not about tennis or silly. They have added uh, Sulaiman Brusinos playing in amazingly. Uh, Barreiros really a trustable coach, a trustable player. And uh, I think all the doubts that they have with with this Zaragoza team is is on the inside because Jason Thompson is not playing well. Linason is not uh, really trustable, uh, and I think uh, they need probably. Some some of these players to to step up uh, on on this matchup, 
and try to especially attack Shermadini because it's okay. real difficult to defend Shermadini. What do you have to need uh, is to attack him to get uh, his fatigue on uh, on defense because if Shermadini has a lot of problems defensively, probably he will not be that uh, reliable on on offense. Mm -hmm. Gerard, uh, we'll also talk uh, talk to you tomorrow at the same time about uh, Saragossa in our final uh, preview before the tournament uh, officially kicks off. Uh, if you, I, I don't think uh, Alex once said anything else. Uh, uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you've pretty much uh, covered everything. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you so much and, and see you tomorrow. Yeah, bye. Uh, so Alex, uh, before we before we bring in uh, Jorgos Bogris, uh, I want to ask you the same question that you asked uh, Gerard. So who do you think is a uh, favorite to win the game against uh, the, to win the game the quarterfinal uh, on uh, October first, if I'm not mistaken? I will give my vote to uh, Tenerife because of their experience and also because they have the same coach. That they used to have, well, they have for the last uh, two seasons. Uh, Zaragoza has a new coach, uh, Ocampo, and I feel like uh, the experience of the team will be a huge part during this quarterfinal. Mm -hmm. And what are the what are the players beside obviously Sermandini and uh, Huertas that you're really looking forward to watch uh, from uh, Tenerife side? Well, Gerard uh, said probably Bruno Fittipaldo is. The most exciting one, he played really well during the, the last uh, ACB uh, bubble. And, uh, well, I would also add uh, Aaron Dornekamp, who already won the BCL with yeah. the team uh, in the first edition. Now he's back in the team. And it seems that he will be really important, especially from the three-point suit. And if he has the day, it would be very difficult uh, for Zaragoza to stop him. Mm -hmm. Are there are there any players? Because uh, obviously I was I was looking at the at the roster that they have and uh, they've 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 seemed to have kept the the core of the team. Yeah. Uh, are there any players that left that you think uh, could be the reason why they don't move to the final four? Well, uh, more than left the team, I will say that uh, it was uh, really hard for them when. Uh, uh, Justa injured himself last season. Uh, he won't be ready until, uh, well, <laughs> we won't know. And yeah. He was a really good player, for not only for this team, but for every team in Spain. He will be a, mm -hmm. a huge uh, player for every team. And mm -hmm. without him, uh, there's no doubt about it. It's a huge miss for them. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's bring in uh, Jorgos uh, uh, have him talk about uh, everything that we've been talking about the last uh, few minutes. Uh, hello, Jorgos. Uh, welcome to the show, and uh, we're glad to have you here. Hello, everybody. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. Uh, we're we're pleased that uh, you are here with us, and uh, we're getting ready to talk some hoops. Uh, so basically, uh, the basketball Champions League is near. The Spanish league has begun. How do you feel that uh, competitive basketball is uh, back again? Look, for us, uh, we are really happy and excited to be part of this uh, final eight. It's a job that we start from last year and uh, with all these things, bad things that happen and uh, uh, the delay we had actually, we're really happy that to have a chance to play for one more trophy and uh, not like the other leagues that was cancelled that the players uh, didn't have the opportunity to live some amazing moments uh, through their careers. So we are uh, really happy we're back. Uh, for us, the break wasn't so long because we was playing until uh, end of June. So actually, our break was one month without basketball, no more. Uh, the only thing that uh, is sad now is that we have to play with uh, no people in general. And uh, for uh, my team, and especially for me, this is something that uh, hurt us a lot because we take a lot of energy and adrenaline from uh, them. You talk uh, about uh, having just one month of rest during the summer. Uh, so I wanted to ask you how difficult it is to prepare for something like this tournament that it's 
probably one of the biggest titles in the in the season uh, at the beginning of the season. Look, uh, to be honest, it's uh, really hard. But on the other hand, we are lucky because we are a team with experience. So all the guys know how to prepare their bodies and be ready for big competitions. Also, we knew about this uh, before we stopped uh, the bubble in Valencia last year. So everybody during the summer tried to be ready and prepared about uh, this competition. Uh, to be honest, it's a little bit hard. The only part that is hard is the, now because of Corona, uh, we have a lack of friendly games. And uh, this was really hard for us to connect on the floor. And this is for, so important for my team, especially because we're a team that we count to each other a lot. We're not individuals, we're a great team. And uh, this hurt us in the beginning because we will need some time more to find uh, rhythm. Uh, but on the other hand, I think we are a team uh, really good work on the floor and uh, that uh, six of us was together last year and coach uh, knows how to connect the puzzle and uh, make uh, our life easier. Uh, so, your... oh. so, so go ahead, go ahead. No, the only thing I want to say is that the only hard part for me is not the physical part, uh, but it's uh, only like... Uh, to connect on the floor, to find the right spacing and to find the confidence because we don't have uh, yet the timing, everybody to reach uh, the standards about basketball. Mm -hmm. a, a follow up on, uh, on what you said about not having that uh, long of an off season, you only, you only had the one month off. Do you think that this could work for your favor uh, in the Basketball Champions League Final late tournament? Even let's say that you are in mid-season type of form right now, and uh, probably it probably could be an issue come uh, next uh, next year, beginning of uh, January or February. Look, to be honest, for sure will be because it's different uh, not to have play competitive basketball for uh, two months or one and a half uh, than to have been without competitive basketball for six months. So yeah. for sure will be we're a step ahead. I think also we're lucky because we're in Spanish league who had already played a Super Cup against Real Madrid, a really competitive game. And after these uh, three games with uh, great teams in ACB, so I think we are one uh, step from, uh, ahead from the other teams they are uh, in Champions League, although they are three already from Spain over there, but for yeah. us it's uh, an extra step. And uh, I think also, as I told you before, uh, that we have uh, six players that was in uh, the rotation of last season continuing this yeah. year. It's uh, really important also. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about uh, that game uh, against uh, Murcia during the weekend uh, where you came back from 24 points uh, uh, and won the game at the buzzer. Do you feel that uh, this game will carry on that you've built from that uh, game will carry on and uh, also play a big role in Athens? Look, for me, I don't know if we carry something. It was a big win. Teams need uh, moments like this. Uh, so they connect better and they build together better. So it was a great moment for us. I think uh, in general it was a bad game for, uh, for my team. A lot of mistakes about the way we want to play, about defensive uh, scouting, about everything. Uh, we are lucky that uh, in the last quarter playing basketball a little bit different than what we are used to with small ball and uh, making Murcia make a lot of turnovers and using also our experience about uh, big games and try to win games like this in the end uh, what was our strength. And uh, we're happy that we make actually, I think, the best quarter in history of ACB with these 44, 43 points in the last quarter. And uh, this is crazy. And all this and the, after the game that we was in the hotel all together celebrating and enjoying a big victory like this, I think... Uh, it's a step forward uh, to be together and to, to connect and to have different players' confidence. Because, uh, for example, as I told you, because we didn't have the time and the friendly games to find everybody our confidence to the floor, Sasha Sally was one of the players that until now didn't have it yet. And uh, since the second half of this game, she's back in the track like it was in last year. And we are really happy because he's a so important player for us. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, was Chus Vidorreta mad or happy after, uh, after the game? To be honest, uh, he was humble. And uh, this is the secret of us because we'll never be 
excited about the success or disappointed about the loss. It's part of basketball. During the game, he was uh, really mad about uh, the small details that we, and the energy we didn't have. But after the game, of course, he was happy. But today, for example, a different coach will go to the next game. But in our practice, the talks was about the three quarters in Murcia and the mistakes we did. So we can build from these mistakes. And this is so important for us. So I will tell you he's happy and he knows that games like this will build character. Uh, the team had the same path last season also with a great comeback in basketball Champions League against uh, Ganzi Atep in our gym, if you remember that game. Again, with Sasha Saling had a crucial uh, last-minute yes. three-point shots. So he was happy, but focused about uh, our next mission, that is Saragossa, that we already played with them in our gym the first game of Asabe. Yeah. Uh, Jorgos, how, how do you feel about that in general, uh, playing in... Uh... In, uh, in Athens, where you've played in Doaka, the, the, the arena, where you've played uh, many, you have, you've had many battles with your former teams, uh, Panathinaikos and Olympiakos. Look, for me, I'm really excited that I will be home. I think this is extra energy and extra motivation yeah. for me. It will be amazing if I, I made it and conquered uh, actually Athens and uh, win a title home and... Uh, enjoy a little bit uh, at least with my family or some friends because this is the limit I can have only. Yeah. Uh, it's sad, as, uh, as I told you before, that I cannot play in front of uh, Greek fans in general because for me especially it's an extra motivation to prove and to win. A uh, strange feeling because I never had it in the past to play a big competition home. Uh, so the only game I have in my mind like this was in the past when... Uh, Uh, Papa Lucas came with Chesseka here and lost by Panathinaikos. I don't remember other player to visit Greece and play big finals like this about, uh, not about national team, but uh, about uh, the clubs. Yeah. So I'm really excited to be home. Sad that we'll be with no fans. And uh, yeah. as we say, as Greeks, you know, maybe I know the rims a little bit better and this is an advantage for me because I have yeah. practiced a lot of hours in this gym. <laughs> Uh, Dionysus and I feel like uh, you are probably going to the tournament as one of the main contenders for the BCL Trophy. But does that put extra pressure on you guys? Look, the year we won it, four years ago, was, uh, we, we wasn't the, the favorite uh, to win the league. I mean, just we go in Champions League to enjoy the journey and the journey lead us uh, until the end. Now is a totally different situation than uh, a normal one because we jump into the final eight immediately. And uh, this is also hard work of the players who was in the team last year also. And we want to thank them. Uh, I think now we have the experience, everybody of us. I mean, from uh, big games, big tournaments, also the players that uh, come into the team like Aaron Dornekamp from high level of Valencia knows how to win. I think the team is built to make uh, no individuals, but great wins. And uh, that's why we are all together here. Also, our coach, uh, he has uh, three years in this club uh, playing Europe, and he has uh, three final fours, and two final fours actually in one final eight. So he knows also the way. I think the favorite uh, now is not us, because Ike is in the home court and uh, has a really experienced team. And especially for September, Guys with experience, I think they know how to prepare the body better and be ready for this type of games. Uh, we have also actually similar characteristics, but we are not home. I think home always gives you the extra uh, pump you need so you can put extra energy in to win on uh, your floor. On this part, we are lucky that fans is not in the arena because <laughs> we will meet Ike in semis if we win Saragossa, probably. And... Uh, This is not a favor for us. And uh, also, it's nice, it's not fans for the other part, because usually, you know, in a tournament that the home team uh, playing, you want them to go to the final, so to have a successful final with the home team. Because imagine in Athens, the final, uh, Tenerife against, uh, I don't know, Burgos. Probably will be only my friends and my family inside, <laughs> and 500 people of loving basketball. So now we play equal, and uh, 
we are really exciting. The thing is, we play together both games is in uh, Thursday, and I think if we succeed, it's Friday the next day. So we started from the same line, and uh, we are excited, and I think we can carry the title of one of the favorites to win the league. Yeah. H- have you told anything to your teammates about Athens, about Oaka? Uh, and Dyke, obviously, if you if you meet them actually in the semifinal, any any advice? What what do you, what do they have to expect from uh, from Athens from Waka? I mean, I could, but uh, with no fans, I have no advice to give. This is my expertise. <laughs> yeah. This is my expertise. Uh, so actually, I'm motivated, good enough to win and enjoy Athens after the game of Sunday. I mean, mm-hmm. with the limits we had, but I think we can still have a great time over there. And uh, so I think my motivation uh, is about, please, let's make this happen. And uh, Sunday night and Monday, that will be nothing. I will lead the way in everything else. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Well, what can you tell us about the the new guys? Because uh, we really praised Bruno Fittipaldo, for example. And we said that maybe... Uh, Tyler Cavano is still getting in the rhythm with the team. What can you tell us about the, the new signings of the team? Uh, of course, about this part, I think also we are lucky because as a team, in the summer market, we upgrade uh, uh, comparing to last season. I think we make uh, a team that uh, now everybody in the second unit can fit perfect, uh, everybody together. We had bad luck about missing Dejan Todorovic, that was a really important player for us a player that uh, can lead in scoring and really tough guy because in this uh, type of competition for me is not about who is more talented but who is more tougher that uh, will continue to the next phase and uh, she can also cover two positions for us two and uh, three and this is a big loss but we have luck to have a complete roster of uh, 12 players and uh, a lot of players that can play two positions so other guys like Alex Lopez now step up and have more leading role, especially in the two positions that I think uh, fits perfect to him, to help also the point guard to move the ball and release the pressure from them, but also taking some uh, picker roles in offense. On the other hand, uh, as you said, we signed uh, players that we was missing. For example, Bruno Fittipaldo, uh, that started the season amazing, is a guy with a great experience uh, from Uruguay. That means uh, he has uh, blood, you know, it's not like... He plays to win, actually, and this is uh, really important for us. The second part is that it's a great player after uh, pick and roll uh, to shoot three-point shots. That is something we were missing. We have great pick and roll connection with uh, Marcelino Huertas, but it's totally different players because uh, Bruno is more type of player shooting after pick and roll and creating more with the pocket pass. And Marcelino is more attacking uh, through the rim and creating with... Uh, actually creating with every way because I think it's the best point guard in uh, this basketball Champions League. And then, as you said about Tyler, I'm really surprised because the player who was missing uh, uh, the last uh, year. A really tough guy playing uh, at four excellent. Sometimes if we need him also in five to create some pick and pop situations. He's a solid in low post, uh, put energy on the floor, chasing rebounds. And also for me that uh, I'm really happy to have a former like this playing with me playing amazing the baseline. And because I'm a player that I'm I'm loving to play around free throw line, it's great because we can connect amazing and can run also the floor so fast. Uh, we have uh, other addictions like Aaron Dornekamp that already knows the team, give us a great uh, spot up three that for us is really important about our spacing and with the team creating with Marcelino and having Sasha Salin and Aaron Dornekamp in the corners. It's amazing because we have a lot of space. The difference cannot help, and this is uh, something great. Also, is a guy that knows the team, has mentality of a winner, and give us something we was missing a lot last year, that is the low post with a small forward, because last season uh, we didn't have this. And the other part is uh, with him, we can also use more uh, Danny Beer at four also, that can stretch us the floor if we need it, because he's an excellent three-point shooter. And uh, also, it's two players that uh, can play three and four together and we can uh, switch or do things that last year we couldn't do it, actually, because our performance uh, was more heavy bodies or they couldn't guard like this in the three positions that now both they can. Then uh, we have uh, Emir Suleimanovic that came from um, Bilbao that uh, 
can cover also two position four and five, can put extra energy on the floor, hustle and uh, help us a lot in this part, especially in the games that uh, we start a little bit soft. This is put us uh, character. And I think we are a team in general that uh, every day and every month we will be better and better because the only team we're missing is uh, practicing time together because, for example, all last week we spent it on a plane. We went, because the island is so far, it's three hours and 30 from the mainland. Uh, we spent, uh, we went to play in Bilbao on Tuesday. We play Bilbao Wednesday. We couldn't come back. We wait there till Friday. Friday we fly to Murcia. We play a Saturday to Murcia. Sunday we fly back to the island. Today we practice. Tomorrow we leave. So our life it's uh, actually in our airport in general because every yeah. second week we are out of home one week and we're missing a lot of practice time. And uh, I think our school now and from the next days will be more the video as uh, coaches also start to do and try to connect us more through our mistakes or the good things we do through uh, video sessions. And uh, I think yeah. every day is better and we need the big wins. And uh, also if we start uh, with a trophy, the season will be amazed because, you know, when you succeed something big, then all season you have also the respect and also the flow you need to continue until the end in a good uh, mentality. Uh, I think you covered pretty much everyone uh, in your team. Uh, I think you should be, I don't know, like uh, uh, helping in the scouting report of the team or so. Uh, I have two, two, two more questions to ask you. The first one is about you. Uh, so you obviously played uh, approximately one year now uh, in Tenerife. Would you, would you see yourself signing a contract extension with them and staying uh, there? Look, actually, I'm two years already because I was four years ago here again. With yeah, I'm same, talking about yes, with the same people and uh, the same coach. Uh, actually, after making my dream true and uh, wearing the jersey of Olympia, because that was something I wanted as a kid, uh, you know, the only thing I care about now is peace. And here I have the peace I need. I work with people that uh, I'm happy. And uh, I have the flow. I mean, it's a job and you never know what's going to happen. So I'm the only thing I can tell you for sure is that uh, I'm really happy and... Uh, I hope this uh, connection and these uh, moments continue from for a lot of years. But on the other hand, you never know. It's a job. Yeah. It's respectful for yeah. both sides, uh, whatever happen, happen. Mm -hmm. But I feel like home. I think uh, this year is the first year of my career that uh, I left Greece and I was happy that I left Greece finally. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I arrived here, I said first time, finally, I'm home. And this is, means a lot to me, especially as George, because means that uh, I adapt totally to the lifestyle and to, to the idea that basketball for me in general will be out of uh, Greece. And mm -hmm. um, also appreciate the place that it's uh, a living paradise, having everything I need. And if you take out only the travel, that it's crazy. All the other parts is uh, whatever an athlete needs. And a team mm -hmm. that has the ambition, because for me, this is the team that the most Spanish team is missing. They are happy about doing good. We are not happy about doing good. We have also this, a little bit, this Canary people has also this Greek mentality a little bit, enjoying life, but also want more and want to succeed. And I'm really happy that uh, they match with my mentality and they want to grow. And I will be happy to be part of this growth of the team and growth of mine also. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one last uh, question. Uh, since since you've played in uh, 12 different teams around Europe, uh, you've basically been everywhere. I want to ask you to give us one funny story that you could think of, uh, either from traveling, from games, from practices, whatever you can think of right now. Funny story? Yeah, from uh, whenever, from whenever, with the last 10 years that you've been playing. Okay, I have a great story about uh, Pauk Thessaloniki. Mm -hmm. When I was in Pauk, we played in a gym uh, in Ukraine, in Chimik. Mm -hmm. So, in the half time, I need to go to the, to the toilet, and I was like, uh, it was called Sulis. The gym of Himic is connecting with a tunnel, tunnel with a hotel, and it's like uh, huge, it's like I don't know how many floors. So, I was like, Oh, it's okay, go inside, okay, George, you start the second part, uh, come. So, I'm going out to try to find the gym, and it's like uh, Tunnel stuff, crazy. I was running like 
20 minutes up and down <laughs> floors basements other nobody spoke english couldn't help me i was opening doors was making short fighting other doors are making gymnastic so the team uh, started so hard without me <laughs> and i was back on the floor like exhausted couldn't believe that uh, this was happening to me and i I think it's one of the funniest stories and also yeah. when I meet uh, my teammates from that year like Chocolas or Karalabidis we laugh like crazy about this because it was uh, it was so funny because also the guys of the team Telis and Ajidis was the GM of this year tried to find me and he get lost also <laughs> so it was like a totally crazy situation so uh, I think it's one of the funny what point did you return to the to the gym it was half of the third quarter oh And wow. already down by 15. <laughs> wow. Ben Schulz wow. was like mad for a week, but we get over it, and we have also a great season. One of the best, like living wise of my life, with a great atmosphere in the locker room and a team. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Yorgos, uh, thank you so much for for joining thank us. You. And giving your no, thank you. Giving your thank you, guys. Good luck, and I hope to see you in Athens. And let's make a new interview. With my metal here, please, if you want, in one week or ten days, I, that, have new stories. I will have new stories. Spice that's, up, that's up to you guys. Uh, let us let us wish you good luck in the tournament, and uh, of course, uh, I guess we'll we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Uh, so, Alex, uh, th- that that uh, that story, I think, was uh, was one of the best ones uh, that we've uh, we've had from uh, players. Uh, They, I have to say, I was lucky because uh, Alex Renfro's story was really, really good, go- a really good one. But this yeah. one was crazy. Well, I <laughs> yeah. guess it was because of the call. They have that tunnel uh, from the yeah. hotel to the... Yeah, to that the tunnel, yeah. From... It's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. At least put some sign outs or something for the players. Here's the arena, no? Or, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alex... Uh... I don't know if uh, if you have anything else to add about the team, about uh, the, the quarterfinal between uh, Saragossa and uh, Tenerife. We're going to talk about that tomorrow uh, in more depth uh, and give our predictions and uh, our insights uh, and your insights and uh, Gerard, uh, Gerard also about uh, Saragossa uh, because uh, it is our final preview before the final eight uh, tournament. Uh, do, do you have something else to say about uh, the team or what are you looking forward to? As we are going to talk about the uh, quarterfinals tomorrow, I would I would just say that uh, Boris should consider to become a coach once he retires. Of course, retires. 100%. 100%. If, if he does it in Spain, cool for me, because he will stay in the Canary Island, whatever, yeah. uh, joining to the Chusby Dorreta staff, whatever. But yeah. he, was, he made an incredible analysis about the, his yeah. team. A coach or a scouter or, I don't know. Yeah, something. As well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. Uh, Alex, Alex, thanks uh, for joining us again in another Eurohoops uh, Basketball Champions League uh, late countdown show. Tomorrow is going to be our last one prior to the to the start of the of the tournament. Uh, I was uh, your host, uh, Dionis Ravadinos, and as I say always, uh, please make sure to to check us out on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram at uh, Eurohoops. Uh, dot net. Uh, in case you don't want to miss any other live shows or go back and watch the ones that we have already done. We've done seven of them uh, with tonight's uh, Tenerife one. And uh, we're going to be here the rest of the week. We're going to bring you more live shows uh, and uh, more news, uh, more highlights about the Basketball Summons League in, uh, in general. So until tomorrow, everybody stay safe, take care and uh, have a good night. See you tomorrow.